This is our ABS uh, deck oven. ABS stands for American Baking Systems. Uh, it's an American company that uh, manufactures uh, various types of baking equipment uh, that we started working with back in early 2018. There's an interesting story to this oven. Uh, we originally had this crazy pizza oven we had a two deck pizza oven that was narrower. So it was two thirds the, the width of this and had two decks. Uh, it had no steam injection of any kind. And the bottom deck was partially broken. So you pizza ovens often have a top heat and uh, a heat on the stone. In my original pizza oven that I bought when I bought the bakery, the top heat in the bottom deck did not work. Um, so, so the oven was really not all that functional. Uh, you could fit eight loaves into one of the decks and that was all the like loaves of sourdough we could bake because of the lack of top heat. So we could bake eight loaves an hour, which is actually similar to the nine loaves that you can bake at once in the larger models of Rothko ovens, which are a very common choice for cottage bakers. Uh, I don't wanna say anything negative about Rothko ovens in the sense that they're a really good oven. They're, they make a lot of sense for a lot of people. In fact, I might own one in the future in my, in my kitchen. Um, they're a really good piece for your home kitchen uh, because they're they're meant to fit, it, whereas you can see that putting this oven in my home kitchen would be a little bit of a stretch. Uh, it's definitely not a good option unless you want an entire wall of your kitchen to become oven. Uh, and it's pretty deep too. But I wanted to go through the function of a deck oven and why we went this route originally. So that original oven, that two deck pizza oven that we had broke down and I had been baking at that point for maybe nine months. We didn't have a whole lot of service relationships in town so we didn't know we didn't know like who to call in in this situation so I went on Google and I tried to find uh, find a company that worked on ovens. Uh, the first one I called came out they charged us to come out uh, they went back to their shop. They called us saying they can't order parts for our oven, but that they have a used equipment store and that they have a pizza oven that I could buy for $5,000. So it felt almost like a bait and switch. Here I lost $800 for them to come out and work on it for a couple hours, only to be told that it couldn't be fixed. It was a little bit of a panic in early 2018. Uh, at the time, the bakery was not profitable by any means. Um, we were, Amanda was still working her, her job at American Airlines in, um, in the back office and the income that she was earning from American Airlines was paying for our living, uh, uh, paying all of our bills and the bakery was just getting, the revenue from the bakery was just getting reinvested um, in the bakery. If we didn't have that extra income, we wouldn't be surviving at that time. So when our main oven went down, it was a really big deal. We've done two fundraisers in our time as a bakery. One time was when we lost our bread oven and we were a baby bakery with hardly, like hardly anyone knew we existed. We certainly didn't have a reputation beyond Phoenix. Um, and even then, we had just recently joined two of our, at the time, three farmers markets that we were doing. So at two of the three markets, we were relatively unknown. We were the bakery kind of in the back aisle of the market. Um, we didn't have kind of the front and center positions that we, that we have today. Um, so we saw that challenge of we just lost our most important device, our oven and what are we going to do? So at that time we could have replaced it with another pizza oven for around 5,000 
uh, or we could dig deep and try to figure something else out. So this oven is steam injected. Uh, right now it's just turning, I just had turned it on. So you can see it's got two different temperatures. Uh, it's set to 320 at the bottom and 380 at the top. I'm really just turning it on right now to show you guys. I don't have anything to bake, so I'm gonna turn it off momentarily, but the stone is heating up to 320, and then the top elements are heating up to 380. And so I can control the temperature individually on the top or the bottom. The oven has two different thermostats in that sense, which, which is really nice um, because I can change the type, the amount of heat that's coming at the lows from the top versus the bottom. Uh, and typically we set the top a lot hotter than the bottom. So I'll show you our typical loaf uh, setting in this oven. Uh, we will put the top around 460 and the bottom around 420 uh, in Fahrenheit. What I wanted to also mention on the temperature is different ovens bake at slightly like have different rates of conductivity so i've seen bakers with deck ovens bake hotter than this and i've seen bakers bake a little bit cooler than this so don't use my guidelines in my oven as as some sort of an indicator of where you should be maybe it'll be a rough guide but obviously if your bottoms are getting burnt in your oven when you set it at 420 that might be too high uh, or if you're not getting enough my previous pizza oven that we were using, we would crank the heat all the way up to 550. And I had a one of those laser thermometers from Home Depot where I pointed it in and, and measured the heat. And when it got up to 550, that's when I loaded it with bread. Uh, but once I loaded it with bread, it was really poor at holding heat. So that's why we set it so high because of how much heat loss there was. Oh, one of the nice things about this oven is there's relatively little to no heat loss uh, inside the oven. It's very well sealed, so when I close these doors uh, and I close the damper, now I have a complete seal on the oven and I can actually trap steam in there. It's not hot enough yet to generate steam. Once the temperature climbs a little bit, this light will light up and that gives me an indicator that I can take the steam function, which I can set in seconds. So this is seven seconds of steam. When I hit this button, it will release basically seven seconds of water into the, into the oven. The steam itself gets released in this, this uh, well up here. And because it's so hot in the oven, it just evaporates. And this oven is very simple in its design where um, it's on casters, so everything about this oven is modular. I can, it's got kind of a system where it's got legs that I can, I can um, rotate and then they basically lift and now it's sitting on its casters. I can move the whole oven around. Uh, granted, it's still hardwired into the wall, so you can, you, when, it's, when it's time to move it, you can undo the electrical and move it around but it's not like you can just move it into new positions over time. It's quite an ordeal. We have moved this oven with the construction of the bakery. It used to be on the far wall, then it ended up in another spot in the original baking room. When it first transferred into this new addition that we're standing in, there used to be a big, like a three inch ledge between the rooms uh, made out of concrete. So moving this oven over that ledge was a big ordeal that, that took us hours. Now I could just wheel it into the other room if I wanted to. Uh, so, but it's still kind of a beast of a thing to move around. Um, I, I guess I wanted to also make an argument for those of you who are thinking about ovens. If you're working in your home kitchen, this is probably not an option, but if you are a cottage baker working in a space that would accommodate more commercial level equipment, uh, like a garage, uh, I would say that you would be 
potentially better off getting two decks in an oven like this, which is, uh, which is a smaller configuration versus getting the highest end Rofco. Two decks in here, I can be baking 24 loaves at once versus nine in, in a Rofco. The steam injection lets me finish my loaves really well. Um, and it will cost you a little bit more four decks in this oven uh, we spent in the 20s I, I, at the time this was a couple years ago i think it was right around 20,000. it cost another 12,000 or so to run the electrical uh, to get it to get enough power uh, we had to do a we had to do a upgrade on our electrical panel this oven grabs as much power as the rest of our house does so we had to double our our power, which we were able to do, uh, no problem. I wanted to put a final piece on this oven of what I like about it, and that it's really easy to service. You can just remove the whole panel, and so in seconds I can just basically get exposure to the whole side. Both sides work like this. All the water uh, and steam components are on this side, so these are called solenoid valves. Uh, they're just like an electrical valve for water. Um, and this is the whole steam set, steam technology. On the other side is all the electrical technology for the oven, and it's just as easy to access. So uh, to service this oven is, is fairly straightforward. A lot of its parts can be found in your local hardware store, uh, which is one of the reasons I like it. I think I think it's a game changer if you are trying to uh, build a bakery for income, uh, for like sustaining your family. Uh, getting a deck oven with steam injection is a worthwhile investment. It was one of the first bits of equipment that we got for our bakery and I'm very thankful for it. Uh, rolling back to a previous world, I was, we were literally feeding our uh, pizza oven 24 hours a day to do eight loaves an hour. Uh, whereas in this one, in one hour, we can bake 96 loaves of bread because uh, we can go two cycles of bread in just over an hour. Uh, no temperature loss. It's really a great device. I can't say enough. This one needs a little TLC. We are getting kind of close to the end of a quarter. Uh, and every time we get to the end of the quarter, we kind of get to some of the deep cleaning of the equipment that we don't always get to do.